Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So our next optional bug fix C release update for Windows 11 24H2 is being finalized in the release preview channel, which Microsoft rolled out um, yesterday, late yesterday in my region on the 18th of March to the release preview channel insiders. And our next update that will be rolling out over the next coming days is KB5053656. And I would suggest that the update will start rolling out Tuesday the 25th of March in that final full week of this month. Now there's quite a lot going on in this next optional update, um, which will be just that. It'll be optional, so you don't have to install the update unless you have get the latest updates as soon as they are available, toggle turned on. And we have 11 new features all of which are rolling out gradually. So you may see these, you may not at the get-go, but 11 new features according to Microsoft and the change log. And then we get a good couple of important uh, bug fixes that are also rolling out gradually. Now, the first new feature, there are two for live captions. And as you may well know, live captions is classified as an accessibility feature. So if we just get into that page there we go and Microsoft says it's enhancing communication on AMD and Intel powered Copilot Plus PCs with live captions and real-time translation this change brings the ability in live captions to translate more than 44 languages into English including speakers in real-time video calls recordings and streamed content and then there's another new feature rolling out for live captions only for Copilot Plus PCs, where Microsoft says it's bringing the ability to do real-time translation to Chinese simplified. So two live caption features made available with this next update. And then for settings, we get two new features and a fix. And the first um, new feature for settings is for the home page, where Microsoft says for commercial customers, this feature will now show some existing cards relevant to enterprise managed PCs like recommended settings and Bluetooth devices as well as two new enterprise specific device info and accessibility preference cards. So that's coming to the homepage for the homepage and settings for commercial customers. And then the next new feature for settings are the new top cards. So we just head to an image of that. A top cards is found under setting system about page and will be at the top of the page and these top cards provide an easy way to view your PC's key specifications like your storage, graphics card, installed RAM and your processor helping you understand your PC's capabilities basically a quick glance feature and I actually enjoy this I think this is going to be a handy feature for a lot of users and then the fix rolling out is for Japanese users where the name, if we just head into that quickly, on your accounts page. This can get a bit confusing, but Microsoft says the name displaying at the top of settings accounts shows shows first name, last name instead of last name, first name. So um, it's a bit of a tongue twister, but that is a fix for Japanese users. And then there are two new input features and two fixes for input. And the first new input feature is Microsoft says they've re-enabled the gamepad keyboard layout for the touch keyboard in Windows 11. The change introduces the ability to use your Xbox controller to navigate and type. And this was pulled a while back. And after a lot of testing, it seems now that this is making its way back into the stable version, which I think is going to make a lot of um, Game Pass uh, users um, quite happy because I have seen quite a positive review regarding this on the channel. And then the next one is a little bit of R candy as I have been mentioning where to improve the discoverability of the emoji and more panel, Microsoft says it's introducing a new system tray icon on the taskbar and I personally feel that's a little bit of R candy. They should be working on stabilizing the OS but nonetheless that will be able to be turned on and off which I think is a good thing. And then there are two important fixes for ctfmon.exe. And if you don't know what that's about, ctfmon.exe stands for Collaborative Translation Framework Loader. 
and is a Microsoft process. It's an important process that manages the alternative user input text input processor and the Microsoft Office language bar, enabling features like handwriting recognition, speech recognition, and keyboard input methods. So there are two fixes rolling out for that. So those that's important. And then voice access gets two new features. And once again, voice access is an accessibility feature. And the first is natural language commanding in voice access will now provide users with the flexibility, according to Microsoft, to speak commands naturally using filler words and synonyms rather than rigid predefined commands. But just take note, this is available at first only to Copilot Plus PCs. And they're also introducing Chinese support for voice access. And then moving on to the task manager, there's a couple of changes happening for the task manager. So let's just head into that. Where Microsoft says they are changing the way task manager calculates CPU utilization for the processes, performance, and the user pages in the task manager. The task manager, they say, will now use the standard metrics to display CPU workload consistently across all pages and aligning with industry standards and third-party tools. And then they mention that for backwards compatibility, there will be a new optional column called CPU utility, um, which will be hidden by default on the details tab. So if you click on select columns, this is where that will be as a hidden um It'll be hidden by default according to Microsoft, showing the previous CPU value used on the process page. So a couple of tweaks there for the, um, the task manager. And then widgets are getting two new features according to Microsoft, where Microsoft says it's introducing the ability for web developers to utilize their existing web content to build dynamic and interactive widgets that can be added to the widgets surfaces in Windows 11. And then it's also bringing support for lock screen widgets. So for this, if we just head over to our lock screen page under personalization, it's bringing support for lock screen widgets to devices in the European Economic Area EEA. And this feature was referred to as weather and more. That's now making its way into the EEA. And then File Explorer gets a very important fix, which I'm very happy to see. And finally, hopefully, this will roll out for File Explorer, where Microsoft says the see more three-dotted menu in File Explorer command bar opens in the wrong direction in some cases, as you can see. So that's now in final preview, and hopefully that will now make its way into the stable version with this next update. And there's a... Remote desktop fix, remote desktop won't use UDP, only TCP, and there's a fix for screen orientation where the screen may change orientation coming out of sleep on two-in-one devices. And there's a boot menu fix, which Microsoft says if an update fails and rolls back, it may result in a non-functional boot menu entry. So that's an important fix. And then we get three authentication um, fixes. That's basically taking place under the hood. And there's a fix for an underlined issue that may lead your PC experiencing a bug check blue screen when resuming from sleep. That's a very important fix. And here's another important fix because it fixes a known issue where the description of the virtual NRC doesn't display correctly in network connections showing garbage characters. That's a known issue that's getting fixed. And there's a color profile fix where it might not display the expected color profile list for the selected monitor and there's actually two color profile fixes and the second one is the color profile settings may not be applied after resuming from sleep and there are two deprecations suggested actions that appear when you copy a phone number or future date in windows 11 are now deprecated and being removed and i'm happy to see that i don't think that feature was being used by too many people and then something i posted on just the other day if we head into our privacy and security page and location, and we head down to this location history setting, this is what's been deprecated. Microsoft says it's removing the location history feature, 
which was an API used by Cortana to access 24 hours of device history when location was enabled. With the removal of the, of the location history feature, location data will no longer be saved locally and the corresponding settings are also being removed on this actual settings page. So this setting will be removed from that page and I have posted on that and that's now making its way into the stable version with our next update. So that's what's going to be rolling out gradually. 11 new features and some important bug fixes. And then on a normal rollout, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 fixes that are mainly taking place under the hood. So quite a lot going on with our next optional update, KB5053656 for Windows 11 24H2, which will be rolling out over the next coming days. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.